I never know comment. exactly when we are live because it says here that we're live, but on my other screen it says that it's setting up the meeting. So it's it kind of, it's anticlimactic because I never know when the actual moment is <laughs> until it loads up on my screen. It's when my friends start trolling me. It's when it happens. Okay, it's actually so live now. I see it. <clears throat> All right. Well, welcome to looks like probably a weekly thing now. We've been this is the fourth straight Friday night of live streaming on Life in the Rock Room, and tonight we are joined by the fabulous Matt Pryor of the Get Up Kids, New Hello. Amsterdam's, and Radar State. That's your latest project, or you have a solo EP too? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've put out a couple of solo records and new. And I've I've done a ton of stuff. The most recent thing Josh and I did was Radar State. Cool. Although mm -hmm. actually, you've done records since then, haven't you, Josh? Uh, yeah, I put out one other record also on Wiretap, which all of us uh, are on, and uh, Radar State included, and the Berenger record and Tiny Stills. Um, so yeah, but uh, yeah, we've been we've been trading some demos back and forth. Matt and I have. <laughs> Subject. So also he's, joining he's... us tonight, we have uh, Josh Berwinger from the anniversary. I think last I saw Josh must have been around 2000 or 2001 at Metro in Chicago from a show I do not remember. I don't either, but I know it happened. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. I think he has the poster to prove it. Uh, thanks for joining us, Josh. And we also have Kaylin West of Tiny Stills. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hi, Kaylin. Oh, hey, Matt. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Oh, your place is cool. Thank you. It's a, a garage. I live in a garage. Nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm, in my, I'm in my garage as well. Sick. Also, oh, you... the lights. Good company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. <laughs> you guys like... have great garages. I, that, my garage does not look like that. No, well, this is own... the garage. This is all I have. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> Well, uh, this is now minus bright, like bubblegum pink, because my kids decided what color to paint it. So I enjoy it. It's it's very nice. It looks awesome. Matt, have we ever played shows together? I feel like on our time on Vagrant, we must have, but I don't think that we did. I don't think we did, and I don't know that we've... Have we ever actually met before? Because <laughs> I, I, know, I know we have mut a lot of mutual friends, um, but uh, yeah... Yeah, I think this is the first time we've ever met, which it's kind of shocking given that all those Vagrant Records tours that happened like 99 through like 2001 that we never yeah, did. Yeah, during that time, we were, we, were, we were vehemently opposed to doing Vagrant tours other than playing with the anniversary in Kofax because <laughs> we just <laughs> wanted to hang out with our friends. Yeah, okay. I think ours were mostly like, it seemed like we were always with face-to-face and like saves the day those were the yeah we did like at, at that least makes sense. in my like year and a half run with the band it was like two full face-to-face -to -face tours which is interesting they're still touring aren't they yeah they are yeah. Face to, i mean no i mean no one's no one's touring right now but not today but in recent months they have toured i believe yeah yeah con <laughs> conceptually so Josh and Matt, are you guys still doing the downright stuff? Uh, yeah, I actually did a, a couple of songs today. Um, yeah, I don't know, Josh, are you still doing it? I'm on there, but I don't advertise for it really. Like every once in a while, if I'm like in a creative funk, I'll kind of post out on social media that I do it. But I haven't really been in one, thankfully. Um, in the last few months so i kind of you know it's they're kind of they're tough for me to do because i put probably i put a lot of, i don't know i don't know how you feel about them that but for me it's like i'm like oh my god unless it's that one one guy uh was like you know downright for those who don't know is um it's a custom songwriting uh website and someone could request you to write them a custom song whether it's for you know mother's day a wedding um, a lover a friend or themselves and you know i always i have weird fans and uh one of them requested like 
I want this to be about uh, <laughs> 90s wrestling, full house, how hipsters suck, um, yeah. finger banging at summer camp. Um, and I was like, oh, cool. okay. And uh, the song kind of came out good, actually. I didn't do the finger bang at summer camp part, but uh, the... Uh, it's not really a, it's not really a tasteful way to do that <laughs> particular subject matter. No, I don't being know. Crass. Yeah, I did. I did I You'd have to do it like in a blink in a blink one eighty two kind of way. Or GG <laughs> Allen. Yeah. <right? laughs> so yeah, every once in a while, but not too often. Yeah, I know. I think Matt, Matt, you're. I think you're like the king of that website, aren't you? Uh, I'm, the, I don't. I don't the know. The king. I, I remember it because I was. I have a profile on there. I don't think it's active right now, but I remember it was the early days. And the website is is downright dot com d o w n w r i t e dot com. Mm -hmm. um, in those early months, I know you were doing like just dozens of of songs. Yeah, I mean, I've done a lot. Uh, it's you know, I, for some reason, people want me to sing them, you know, love songs. So I'm happy to oblige. I think I I I kind of went the way of of Josh, where I, it was like pretty challenging like i did four or five of them and i think I'd, i'd i probably took it far too seriously about well i think of... that's the the kind of the, the key with it is at least as far as i found like i i take it seriously but i don't think of it as ever being something that's for me it's sort of like something that's for the people who requested it and it's just a different um like I, I had to get out of that headspace in order to, to do this because otherwise uh, all my songs, I think we sometimes tend to think of our songs as being super precious, even though sometimes they're just a stupid pop song that we just made up, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, so I have to like find that balance of which songs to be precious about and which songs to like, um, you know, but it, I will say this, it's made me a much faster lyricist because I have to write so many lyrics. So now I'm just like, I can come up with stuff really quick. Yeah, that's... <clears throat> I, I think don't know if that's a positive skill or not, but... I think that's a positive skill. That's that's a challenge. That that leads me to a question I was going to ask all of you. Like, I'll start with uh, Kaylin. When you, when you come up with a new song, do you typically come up with a vocal melody first, a chord progression... Or lyrics first, like what kicks off the writing process when you're going to come up with a new Tiny Still song? For me, I always start with like a phrase or something that's inspiring the idea of the song. I wish I could say that I started with melody. I think it's, you know, so important, but I just, my brain doesn't work that way. I love people who can pull that out and just be like, I got this great thing. It's stuck in my head already. But I always start with words. It's always been that way for me. So you'll have like maybe not the full song, but like, like a couple lines, and then that'll. Yeah, you... like I'll try to find like a really strong point, like a, something that I really want to highlight, in like the the idea of the song, and then eventually I'll kind of play around with that, and I'll push it around. Sometimes it'll end up being like strongest in the the first verse, and then if I like it enough, I'll try it in a chorus position and kind of see how I can fit it around to be like the point of the song or like if i want it to be really like pointed or mean or you know i just not that that's the songs i write but i feel like i typically write around an idea and then kind of try to expand on it and, sh and rearrange it like legos that's, that's cool so like your lyrics in a way kind of dictate what your melody is going to be yeah and um it, it's kind of it's just always been easy for me to to write that way Although I get stuck a lot on bridges and I'll kind of pause and not write a bridge for like a week and then come back to it and see if I can write some departure that's cooler than the chorus, you know, you know, but I, I really do get stuck in, in those kind of songwriting holes, I think, by doing it that way all the time. Huh. But, that, that's very cool. That's a cool way to do it. Yeah, it's, it's, it works, but yeah, it's hard for me to branch out in other ways, but I try to. Josh, how, what's your process? And you've been writing, you said you've been writing a song every day, which is, that's incredible. Um, I, I just, it's all, all of those things. It just, it just depends on the whatever, you know, depression I'm in, I guess, or what I'm feeling. And it's, you know, all that stuff. 
comes out and it's a melody it's a uh, you're just messing around. you can't write something so you just pick up the guitar and you know uh, something comes out and it's terrible or it's great and um you know it's just all those feelings it's, that make a song really and it's you know melody chords or um so it's it's listening to other stuff it's listening to the television set it's listening to you know like nature outside like all that stuff is just kind of like pushing you with like ideas and so i mean and yeah like writing a song recording a song a day you know a few of the a few of the things that i've written you know kind of like stuff i just hummed into the phone one time and i was like oh that's kind of horrible or that's kind of good and you know you work on that so it's pushing to write a song record a song a day that's what i've been doing in this thing uh, a called lockdown that's cool yeah i've i've you recorded sh- a lot you should during... do a... oh, go ahead matt go ahead sorry no 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 i tend to take over conversations my do mind. it say it <laughs> do it take it so, over no i was gonna say you should you should do like a patreon or something like that where people can like subscribe and you can play your song a day for like that could be a cool uh, just an idea but i need to learn more about that i don't know much about it I I, we can it. talk about it i just started one last month and is it's it been fun really uh <laughs> fun i mean it's it's an it's a way to interact with with your fans i like writing mm-hmm. music and i like it's yeah. like the only the only music i write for money is the downright stuff right now. And so it's kind of a way to like write music and still make some, you know, some income from the songs that I'm actually writing for myself. Okay. I don't know. I, 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 I like it. It's fairly, it's fairly low impact work. If you're writing yeah. songs anyway. Yeah. yeah, I definitely am interested in that. Do you do one Kayla? Yeah. I had one that wasn't active for a while. Um, it's like a ongoing Kickstarter and you can do it per project or you can do it per month, okay. you know, so your subscribers either get, they sign up for either per project or monthly fees. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mine wasn't active for like a year, but I revamped it in December and it's it's cool. Mine's just pay what you want and then I'll post like um, uh, journal entries. Like I'll do a journal entry like every week or, or I try to and I'll do like live videos or do a cover song that I don't want to put out like public because I'm like, I don't know if I yeah, like yeah. But like people might think it's cool that I covered this song. I don't know. Um, but it's it's kind of just like a private little like journal thing is how I okay. treat it, which I don't think Matt yours is is probably See, different. That's song. that's a part of it. Is... Yeah. Mine's... Song based. Yeah, mine's just songs right now, but like yeah, the the journaling part is like something that something that people are really into, and I, I just have a hard time uh, writing about myself unless it's in like really, a, a, you know, obtuse metaphors in song lyrics. <laughs> but um, do people, I mean, that seems to be something that people really like. Like, it it really does seem to be a place where people like really who are like really like fans of like everything that you do and they want to be supportive. And so they want to know the like, like Anthony from Bayside was saying that he does these like Spotify playlists on his Patreon. And pe- it's just like, here's what I'm listening to this week. And people like love it. And I'm wow. like, why do they, I was like, why do they give a shit what you're listening to this, <laughs> this week? And it was just, like, <laughs> and I have to, I have to fight that. I mean, you've never had a live journal. You never did live journal. Never did oh, I'm a little, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit older than you. Oh, no, you no, you I did a girl. I can't tell. It's you look gr- the, the beard, not an indicator. <laughs> not an indicator of me being, no. being an old, an old mountain, <laughs> not a mountain man. Not, not at all. I live on a, I live on a mountain. <laughs> Are you drinking whiskey right now? What is that? No, it's a uh, beer. Oh, apple okay. cider vinegar. Apple cider. <laughs> apple cider vinegar. <laughs> is that what you said? <laughs> Do I have a Schwarzenegger accent? Schwarzenegger. <laughs> oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know I'm for the rocks. For a while, the uh, the singer from the Matches, Sean Harris, did a Patreon where he did a podcast every day, and wow. uh, and he was like recording. He was recording a, a record, and a lot of times would be just. His podcast, he's recording a song and he's basically got a mic going where he's kind of talking you through what he's doing, recording a song. So that could be something, Josh, if you're recording a song every day already. Mm-hmm. 
No one wants to listen to how I record a song. Uh, I think some people would like to listen to that. <laughs> I think that's I think that's something that's especially of, of people of our generation and like punk rock is like you get this sort of like uh, like I I don't really care what my favorite artists are necessarily eating that day, but it seems like <laughs> like younger fans really get into stuff like that. I don't, I don't know why. Oh, but. I mean, I I don't really care what you're eating, but if I could like watch your process of like writing and recording a song, I would be into watching that. That is kind of interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, De Desmond Child did a um, podcast on that. And I don't know. It's always interesting to hear good songwriters. I haven't heard that name in a while. <laughs> Desmond Child? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm sorry. I keep fiddling around. I can't hold a guitar. I like it. Oh, it's that's good. okay. Well, we are coming. We're coming up on 15 minutes, so it's about time to play a song. You're fiddling around, so do you want to play one first, Matt? <laughs> yeah, I want to do. So <laughs> I have this. I I just. Does it matter what song I play? No. Okay. So hey, Josh. What? I wrote a song that I think might be a good Radar State song. You want to hear it? I do want to hear it. Is this okay. the first time I'm hearing it? Yeah, it's the first All time right. I'm ever playing it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> it's a, I'll it's do, a cor it's I'll do a background vocals on okay. what I don't know. Just go. Uh, it's a cor it's a quarantine love song called Maria. All right here we All go. Right. And if I I've never tried this before, so if I screw it up, that's. Too much time was squandered when I didn't get to see ya. And now I'm all these miles away. Oh my God, Maria. The virus isn't quite the plague, but that's semantic trivia. I'll just take it day by day without you here, Maria. I was in the garden, are not the panacea. Mindless tasks might be the cure to thoughts of Maria. Careful what you're wishing for, it might come to be, yeah. You wanted life to slow it down, but not without Maria. And here's the guitar solo. Something. That I've kind of got an idea for. Even if we both survive, we won't have the freedom of being ignorant of life. Those days are gone, Maria. That's it. Hell yeah. I think we could do something fun with that. Dude, I think that's great. I'm excited about that. And I, I wrote a weird, I wrote a guitar solo for it, but I know if I show it to Jim, he, he just won't. That's what I was about. <laughs> Jim better be on this thing. Troll us, Jim. Probably none. Jim sent me a text before this. And it so, yeah, I don't know. No, that's great. I, I love that. I absolutely love it. I think it's perfect. So what did you write first on that, Matt? The, the melody or the lyrics? I think the melody... Oh, because it was a... For some reason, and tell me if this is a thing that you guys recognize that was just going. Yeah, that's, that's a thing, right? Yeah. What song yeah. is that? It's a song. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, yeah. like, it's like that's such a, like, for like, sure earworm. a song. But yeah. that's what. That's what. <laughs> yeah, but that's all. It, that's so I kept like dicking around with that when we were on tour, and then it was just kind of like. So it's the same chords, just without the little like, the little mm -hmm. riff. And then I just started kind of humming a, a 
melody and I just, I've been thinking a lot about this, uh, cause like I've wanted for a long time to be home more and it's kind of like, be careful what you wish for. Cause now I'm forced to be home more, you know, <laughs> cause we can't go on tour. Yeah. And, uh, so I thought that would be an interesting, an interesting perspective to write from. A little bit of soul. Thanks, Matt. But yeah, I, a little bit of soul. Is that what it is? A little bit of soul. Yes. Little bit of soul. Little bit of yeah. soul now. Little, no, it's a little bit. I was thinking deeper shade of soul. Uh, a little bit of what soul. Is, who's that yeah, artist? Maybe. Who is that? It's not little Anthony. Who is what is that? How does Gilligan artist? know that? Gilligan's like schooled in sixties and fifties music. <laughs> it's gotta be like a mid sixties song, right? Yeah, I would think it's like got that early sixties, yeah. mid sixties, so. yeah. Have you ever written like a melody in your head that you think sucks? and then it won't stop playing in your head? Have you ever done that? What is it? I say, say have, you ever, again, like, you have you ever like written, written a melody like inside your head that you think is terrible, and then it's stuck in your head and, and it won't go away, and it's one that you of your own concoction? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you just got to record it. Yeah, more. Yeah, and then walk away from it for, for a while. Yeah, but mostly I write. But I, those are the ones like I, I like write a melody I think is stupid, and I just feel like, uh, like there's this song on the new Get a Kids record called Lou Barlow, and uh, it's just like I wrote this like silly little line that's like I saw Lou Barlow on the street. I saw Lou Barlow on the street. I don't think he noticed me. And it's just a dumb line, but it kept getting stuck in my head. Dude, and then I wrote a whole song. That's so what? funny you say that because when I was in high school, um, uh, you know, like Ozzy and GNR and, and Dinosaur Jr. were like my favorite things. And Lou Barlow had said this thing in like Spin Magazine, or I don't remember what it was, but he was like, they were talking about songwriting. And he said, you know, sometimes I'll write this song and exactly what Mike was saying. And it's, if the melody sticks in your head over six months or four months, if something in that term, then it's worth recording to and going back to. But if it doesn't, then it's just worth forgetting. And that's, that's kind of crazy how that kind of came up. I, yeah, I mean, I think I agree with that. But then I think you also have to, like, make, make sure that it's interesting for you. You know what I mean? Like, that, oh, definitely. It's not I just, just like... Yeah. Yeah. I went... So do you guys know Largo in Los Angeles? The... Venue yes, here. I've never, I've never been. I've always wanted to go. It's so fucking cool. But I saw Ben Folds do a show there. It's like, for those of you who don't know Largo, it's just this really intimate venue, yeah. and it's like small, like theater, um, and people just drop it and do really impromptu shows and like forget their lyrics and don't care, and everybody loves it, you know. Um, but Ben Folds came and did like this this show there, and he was talking about how he doesn't have a piano in his house, and people were huh. like are you kidding me? And he said that same exact thing. He said, well, I just know if a song's good because it's in my head and then I'll remember it. And by the time I get to a piano, I'll, you know, I know it. And I'm, everyone's like, fuck you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But like, I, I just, I remember when he said that the audience like gasped, there was this audible, like <gasps> everyone said that. And I felt the same way, but yeah, that's funny. You brought that up. Somehow the ones that I make up that I hate the most are the ones that stick in my head. But I think I'm going to do the Josh, what Josh suggested, and just record those. It's like yeah. if you have a bad dream, tell somebody yeah. about it. Yeah. And if you make up a shitty melody, record it, and then it's gone. Well, I think especially right now, it's, <laughs> Get it out. it's like if I feel like I wake up and I just decide to start watching TV, I feel like this is like the time to just push and push yourself to record and record and record and write and write it's like you don't get opportunities like this i know it's like it sucks also but it's like how do i take advantage of something that sucks and that's yeah. how i feel about it so uh, uh, yeah i will say though you don't want to be like you you do in these extraordinary circumstances want to be like kind to yourself like if you don't write the great american novel while we're in quarantine or you know what i mean like if you're just like sure i'm having a sh i'm you know you gotta like have that balance of like you know what <clears throat> and i've been kind of struggling this week because it's been super dreary like and rainy all week and i've mm -hmm. just been like i'm just gonna sit in bed 
you know what I mean? Like it's just but Well, yeah, part um, of part of hard work is sometimes not doing it and just yes, like relaxing. And that's what refuels you. Um, but I think what I'm what I was just saying is just like okay, maybe I don't want to do this, but at least let me go down there. Maybe I won't record anything, but I'll come up with something. And if I just do that for three hours, sometimes it's eight hours, but sometimes it's like two and it's just, mm. you know, and then I kind of go upstairs and play video games Friday the 13th. <laughs> Josh, <laughs> do you feel like you're going to burn out or do you feel like burnt out on it, the process? I'm not, no, I have no, it's when I burn out, I'll be dead. Like, I'm not joking. That's not a joke. I will be right. like, I feel yeah. like, I feel like most artists when I feel most artists when they die, it's like they kind of have nothing left to give for the most part. And that's why they die. Um, and I sort of kind of feel like that in a way where it's just like, not that really people really give a shit what I do, but that doesn't matter because I care. So they say that about like people when they go into like retirement. That, like there's a higher percentage of, of totally. people who, who die i mean god i don't know what I'm, we don't have to be super morbid or anything but just because <laughs> they don't it. like you gotta Let's have like a <laughs> gotta have like a purpose you know yeah definitely mm -hmm. hobbies are great yeah. i just now figured out how to make this so i can see you and read the comments Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Only losers play Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> Did someone say that? Yeah. It's probably someone I play Friday the Thirteenth with. Higher percentage of, of totally. <laughs> Brackley said I've just I, been I, watching I, TV. I, I, <laughs> wait, is, is oh, Brackley, Brackley, you gotta have Brackley like, there? Yeah, Brackley's there. You gotta have like hi, a, Brian. Shit, yeah. I just figured Definitely. out how to see the comments now too. Are great. Oh, that does was he, Elliot does he Marshall. Have his trash bag. <laughs> Figured out how to make this. Like, yeah, Brackley, you have your trash bag. Right, Clyde plays bass with Burwanger, and when he tours, he tours with a trash bag instead of a suitcase. <laughs> yes. It's a very good vintage, vintage trash bag. Nice. That's yeah, amazing. we went to we went to go pick him up. We went to go pick, pick him up, and he's like, "Okay, I got my bag," and it's just a black trash bag. <laughs> well, let's get a, let's get another uh, song going. Kaylin, you want to play something for us? Yeah, um, sure, I would love to. Um, this is my first time playing this song, too. Um, <clears throat> All right, Josh, that means you have to play a first time song, too. <laughs> I'll do that. Hell yeah. Um, I also, this is the first song that I wrote since quarantine started. Um, uh, it's called Dating in the Apocalypse. Um, I started it before quarantine, um, and it, but it's the first one that I really kind of got the um, energy to finish and I put it out as just a solo song because Tiny Stills I mean it's like we're not doing much can, and we can't tour we can't we had to cancel tour blah 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 um, so I just put it out as me um, my name but yeah I, it feels relevant <clears throat> I'm gonna put a little little effect on here reverb okay. <laughs> We should have been concerned when crow stops sounded like their birds and made machine gun sounds. They imitate what they're around or when we put kids in cages just cause we can't speak their language could have been a sign. Something wasn't right, I'm not impressed with love these days. Can't pay attention and pretend that everything's okay. Catching fire in denial with a smile on your face. He tells me that despite it all, he tries his best to recycle. It's fear disguised as hope, but what a futile way to cope. He says, how can you believe in God when you look at all that's going on? And I don't think he's wrong, but aren't we barely hanging on? and pretend that everything's okay when we're going up in flames catching fire in denial with a smile on your face so take me out my apocalyptic love hold me close until the sun comes up or the glow from the bombs falling from above Oh. 
Can't pay attention and pretend that everything's okay. Going up in flames, catching fire in denial with a smile on your face. I'm not impressed with love these days. Can't pay attention and pretend that everything's okay when we're going up in flames, catching fire. With a smile on your face. Hell yeah. Boom. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Great. That's very good. That was awesome. Yeah. I like that. Thanks, y'all. That's cool to hear that one Thank acoustic you. because it's it's kind of more electronic on like the, the one that you put out, right? Yeah. So I did like a I did a production of it that was just like completely electronic and weird, you know, something that like tiny stills does not sound like. Um, just because it was like a song that I did by myself and I wanted it to kind of feel a little bit cold and inorganic sounding. Um, and it sounds kind of dark. It sounds a lot darker, I think, than like that acoustic version that I just did. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was just feeling like, I mean, it's so hard to look around and just feel, um, optimistic about anything, you know, and it's, it almost feels like you're just in denial if you're like, oh, I'm really happy I met somebody or or just the idea that you can still find happiness at a time like this with all this shit going on. Um, and I just wanted to get that out. Like you guys were saying, like a bad melody, you want to get it out. Um, and I was just like, I'll just put this out and maybe I won't feel <laughs> as pessimistic anymore. Um, but thank you guys for listening. It's yeah. a very good was, song. Yeah, it was awesome. I yeah. liked it. Oh, thank you guys. That means a lot. Um, yeah, I just... I'm not, I can't do it every day. I feel like I would get burned out. Like, not like you, Josh, but. Um, no, that's, it's, it's not I, about that. Yeah. yeah. That's, you don't want to do stuff when you're burned out. Yeah. I just didn't feel good. And that was the first time I felt like I wanted to say something and, and that came out. So, and yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah. yeah. I was burned out for a, a long time before this, you know, just kind of like, mm -hmm. and then this happened and I was like, shit. Yeah. Right. I hear that. All right, Josh, are you going to play us a never be hurt, never before hurt song as well? You're getting all these yes. exclusives today. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, but mine's not like really, I haven't really written a song about being locked down. I just, so, but I guess you could maybe look at it like that if you want to. Um, so I guess it's called One Big Circle right now.
That's great. That is great. Somebody commented that we've got the half a Radar State EP bootlegged right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're premiering the yet to be produced next Radar yet, State. Yet EP. to be composed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kaylin, I guess that means you're in Radar State now. Hey. <laughs> oh, that's great. You can take my part. I'll like move to Congos. <laughs> You're gonna play Congos? I, I can't, I can't I don't feel. Like... No, I've always kind of just wanted to be a Congo player. <laughs> I think you can fit it in perfectly, yeah. Congo. Yeah. You could be like one of those. Uh, remember when that was a trend for a while when like pop band lead singers all had a floor tom. <laughs> Oh, you know, like God. they all just, yes. and it's just like, why do all these bands have extra floor tops? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I do remember that. It haunts me at night. <laughs> that was uh, like fairly recently, right? I would say like 2009-ish. Yeah, it was yeah. within the last five, ten years for sure. That was like the year of this singer with the floor tom. Yeah. They'd have like a floor tom and maybe like a shaker yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a post Mumford and Sons when you have the guy with just a kick drum, and then it yeah. just kind of evolved into like. I mean, I guess I kind of understand if you're. I've never been a stand up singer, but like wanting to do something, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like with your hands. <laughs> That's the whole reason when I when I play like solo with a band. It's the only reason I play guitar in the band is because I don't know what to do. If I was yeah, just, uh, I'm not very friend, good at uh, guitar. Our friend Rob Sukon used to say it's a prop. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's like a fashion accessory to have a guitar. It's like having a cigarette that you don't smoke. And it's also like an ex if, you have, if you're singing most of the time and playing guitar, you don't have to have too many moves, although some people do have cool moves still. But it's like an excuse to not have as many cool moves because I don't have any. I always envy the people that have really cool rock moves on stage. They have to work on it, though. You know what I mean? Like, I've never felt comfortable with the idea of, like, practicing swinging a microphone. You know, like, like if you were just, like, really good at it because you just instinctively were really good at it, that would be one thing, but... Don't you don't see know. certain certain people, though, and think, like, they were just kind of born to rock and they didn't have to practice the moves? I, I mean, that... That's just good showmanship. <laughs> like, uh, you know, that's... like what's what's the guitar player's name? I know him, and I should know. I don't remember his name. The guitar player in Hot Rod Circuit. Is it? Casey. Oh, Casey. Casey. Yeah. 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 That's that's I. Well, Josh, you you, you want to take that one? Do you think yeah, Casey? Casey doesn't practice. I mean, Casey just feels it. He's you mm -hmm. know, I mean, he he's just a he's a great great songwriter. He's a great performer and. It's not, it's just in a, you know, yeah, so what, exactly what you said. It's, uh, he just knows, he's just up there. And it all just comes to him as it goes, you know. Probably like James Brown. I mean, I'm sure he practiced some of those moves, but I'm sure he practiced less than he practiced more. Because he felt yeah, or, or like Mick Jagger, like, do you think early on he practiced that I stuff? I mean, Mick, Mick probably practiced because he probably watched James Brown nonstop, you yeah. know. Yeah, that's like their version of practicing is you just watch. Yeah, I guess that is. And, and then in your brain, just like inject it into your vein. Then, it, then it's there. Yeah, yeah. I guess. It's also that 10,000 hours thing, I guess. If you're just feeling it on stage, you kind of if you've done it enough times, then you can. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, here's a serious question. If you spend 10,000 hours looking dumb on stage, do you then eventually just look cool? <laughs> like, is that, do you know what I mean? Like, do you think you eventually just settle into something where you're like, yeah, this is my move? I mean, I guarantee you that you know? your, interp yeah. your interpretation of you looking dumb on stage, somebody thinks is cool. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not necessarily yeah. talking about you specifically, but like, think about someone like, you watch that old footage of like Joe Cocker, where it looks like he's oh, you're right. basically having a seizure when he sings. Yeah. But then surely there's people who are just like, oh my God, that guy's so amazing but i'm sure he was just like i don't know i don't know how else to do this you know like yeah i just wonder if he, he just wasn't self-conscious like i guess some people were like wow joe cocker looks dumb right now i mean i guess there's those people too so i don't know sounds terrifying yeah overthinking the way you look when you play ah, ah! <laughs> I, I just more, you don't have, you don't have to worry about that for a while 
I get I get more concerned with like where the hell are we gonna park? That's the once parking's out of the way, I'm good for the I'm like stress free. Mine is where am I gonna eat? Yeah, oh, the, the eating that is. Uh, that's my stress. That's ninety percent of what people talk about on tour. Yeah, like when can like, you eat and what will it be? Yeah. yeah, will it be good? And then if you're gonna if you're gonna play that day. At what time of the day is it too late now to eat? When did you miss well, the window? Right. I even just did that because we ordered food um, for dinner tonight, and uh, I went and picked it up, and I was just like, oh, my God, I can't eat, like, a full meal right now. I have to go do this this live stream. With, I just like I don't want to, like, <laughs> be burping the whole yeah. time. For me, on, on tour, though, it's usually about a two- to three-hour window of when I can eat, like it has to be like that long before I'm gonna yeah. sing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, th- I think I need at least three, at least for drumming. And yeah, I have like a, a, I got a big thing of Tums that I bring on stage uh, every yeah. every show. Wow. And our bass player always will ask like, how many Tums tonight? And I'd be like, five. And he's like, all right, so it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh so God. the quality of the show is gauged based on how many Tums I had to eat. Um, during the set. <laughs> Mike, I love you. There's a limit on how many Tums you can have in 24 hours, and I think it's like four. <laughs> well, I've sometimes had five in, a, in an hour and a half set. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, you're still here, so I guess it's okay. Yeah, I, dr- I bring contradictory items on stage. It's like Coca-Cola and Tums, <laughs> which are the opposite. Yeah. Well, that's like I saw it the other day. At, uh, there's this... Uh, this farm store. We we just got backyard chickens again. And so we went to this farm store called Orschlands here in town to get the chicks and then to get like chicken feed and stuff. And they had Larry the Cable Guy potato chips. So it was like Larry the Cable Guy, like biscuits and gravy flavored potato chips, chili cheese fries, potato chips. But Larry the Cable Guy is a spokesman for Prilosec, which is basically like heartburn medicine. Mm-hmm. So he's like burning the candle at both ends. He's giving you the heartburn and he's taking it away. <laughs> oh my God, that's brilliant though. Yeah, the, the more chips he sells, the, the higher his Prilosec endorsement pays. Yeah, right? <laughs> my God, what a weird job. <laughs> being the spokesman for Prilosec? Yeah. I can, I, yeah. Or being Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like the Prilosec, that... I don't know. Mike, you can be spokesperson for Tums. I yeah. should be. I should be. It's a more Some, res- it's a more respectable. Someone just right. commented, "Do you think in sync practice their moves?" I don't think so. I think no, they I just think all that naturally all, knew. I mean, I know? think they were just in sync with each other. Yeah, they just <laughs> knew. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They just felt the crowd when they played those dives. Mhm. <laughs> they put in their 10,000 hours before they got big. Definitely. I, I know when we were uh talking about <laughs> having moves uh craft posted like you just gotta feel the crowd but i would say what if there is no crowd or what if the crowd is very well small? this is this has been a new skill to have to learn doing these live streams <laughs> yeah <clears throat> is that like you don't get that immediate you know feedback of of what, whether it's positive or negative whether it's like clapping or just kind of like you can look into the crowd and see people just looking at their phone at a show, I'm sure everyone's had that. Yeah. Um, and then also you have to get used to not reading the comments while you're performing, because that'll <laughs> fuck you up too. That's true. You start, I'm just gonna start, here, I'll write songs about, like whatever these posts are, I'll just make up a, a song. Uh, oh, that's a good title for a song. What are you gonna dance to tonight? I might actually take that one. So don't take, don't take that one. Okay, mind. fine. You know how I like to use dance in my lyrics. So, that's true. So. I got that one. Thank you, Danielle. That's my next song. What was it called? What are you going to dance to tonight? That's a great title for a song. Yeah. It can mean That's so a... many different things. Oh, Josh, I want to write a melody to that right now. I have the melody in my head already. <laughs> <laughs> I think it goes uh, G to a B minor. Uh, you you a each C write, to a D. You, you each write to... a song. Both of you write a song, What Are You Going to Dance To Tonight? And then you come back on and it'll be What are you gonna dance to tonight? 
that's power pop going there. Yeah. But I don't know if I, I don't know. Are you gonna dance to tonight? Yeah. Are you gonna dance to tonight? That's very power pop. Yeah, that could be good. That might be it, yeah. though. Well, have to... you, you have to write it. Well, that's part of it. That's a start. We'll make Jim, let's make Jim write it. Make sure uh, Jim. Danielle Roman gets a, gets a credit on that one. Uh, you got it, Danielle. You get a credit, but no money. <laughs> well, there's no money in this business anymore. Anyway. <laughs> that's, that's true. Speak for yourself. Actually, you can send her Raking part it of the in right bill. Now. You can send her part of the bill of what it costs to produce the song. <laughs> she's, she's, she's partially responsible for writing it. She can help fund the recording. <clears throat> Well, do you want to play us another a real song, Matt? Real? Or do you want to like finish the What Are You Gonna Dance to tonight? Uh, no, I think that's a good little hook, though. Um, I'll play a song. It is a good hook. Um, uh, I'll play this Lou Barlow song I was talking about before. Sorry, I was gonna, I was gonna, I had a melody on the guitar note for that. Do it. What are you gonna dance? Well, I didn't. Can't, we're like okay. a little probably off on our yeah, the late, synchronicity, the kind of like, but yeah. uh, yeah, I got it. All right, <clears throat> this song is called Lou Barlow, and it's not about Lou Barlow, he's just in it. Uh -huh. I saw Lou Barlow on the street, and I don't think he noticed me. I started humming all his songs, you refused to sing along. I told you time and time again, this is not just play pretend. I thought forever, man, forever, but sometimes people change. And if I don't feel the same, then we're not where we belong. Then we're not where we belong. So many places we could go, and I just wanted you to know. To put this all into perspective The pond is not the sea And I would burn this town to embers If you ever asked But if this doesn't last Those years in the trash We're not where we belong We're not where we belong And hours before the fight We have every other night You looked me in the eyes and said Maybe this should be the end We're not where we belong We're not where we belong not where we belong I saw Lou Barlow on the street I don't think he noticed me I wasn't sure how to end it Woo! Yeah. So while I was playing that I was realizing <laughs> I have not played that song since March 13th because that was the last show that we played Oh uh, yeah Wow The and dashboard made, tour? Yeah, well, it was a headline. We had a day off on the dashboard tour, and so we had a, a, a headlining show on Long Island, and okay. then came and then came home, and we're just terrified the whole time going home that you know we had just been in New York for four days, and it's just like, Ugh. whoa, yeah. But luckily, all of us were fine. So, knock on wood. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> Must have been really stressful. Yeah, I just had a, I just had a moment of like. How does this song go? <laughs> <laughs> That's even worse when you're doing it like acoustic style. Because mm -hmm. there's, there's nobody else in the band to just keep it going while you try to remember. Yeah, totally. To yeah, you can't really, you can't really vamp. <laughs> you know, like... It was the bass player. He messed up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sorry, Brightfly. <laughs> Brightfly doesn't mess up. He just plays alternative notes. Diminished notes. Alternative notes. I like that one. <clears throat> he's just going like he's he's going like freeform jazz style, momentarily. Yeah. And that's perfect for our style of music. So it's <laughs> that, great. That's a, that was a thing. Uh, we played a show. That's a, a Rob Pope term. The the alternative notes thing. And the, uh, but uh, we played this show and we were playing in New York on New Year's Eve. I guess you know two new years ago and we were going on at midnight so we were all at least a little um we were having a lot of fun that night and so we were we went on at midnight and there were there's one where i could hear rob just totally beef it in a song and i look over at him and he just goes jazz <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the notes you don't play. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Caitlin, do you want to play us another yes. another pop number? Yeah, I would love to. Cool. Um <clears throat> Cool. So this is our last single that we put out on a split on Wiretap Records. Um it's called Everything's Going Great. The split is with um, Odd Robot, who I love. Um, but this is our original contribution. Oops, hang on. I want to put some reverb on. I got a little do ditty. Great. All right. Tell all my friends that I'm sorry. Going great. Just don't ask me. 
falsetto. Damn. Thank you all. That was sweet. awesome. Yeah, Thank very you. good. Very good. Your songs are so melodic. I, I find it very interesting that you write lyrics prior to a melody because your songs feel very melody driven to me. Thank you. Um, I think I that that one came fast that like every now and then i think you guys can kind of talk to this a little bit but like i feel like every now and then a song just kind of comes out really quick and then you're mm -hmm. like damn that was fucking cool because it just kind of flows and that one was one for me that kind of just happened in a matter of like half an hour um it doesn't always happen like that obviously but um I, I try to rework stuff a lot i've i've gotten into like self editing a lot which can be detrimental but i didn't that one I got lucky. <laughs> I don't know. It was the right time. Like Josh is saying, like you just go down for a little bit and you try a song and you see what comes out. And sometimes like you get something great, and then other times you get nothing and you go play video games. Um, <laughs> and I think I just got lucky. Like I, with that, I felt like I just happened. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't do it, then you yeah. don't know. You know. That, totally. So. I feel like if I didn't sit down at that moment, I would have got a different song. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Or like writing down, do you ever like, like when you're falling asleep and you come up with a melody or, or a lyric idea yeah. and then you, you like have to get you like, fuck, fine. Are you too, la like, yeah. are you too yeah. lazy I'm to, so get, tired. to yeah. go do it or are you I not? Know. Because you're not going to remember it in the morning. No. Yeah. <laughs> like I or, feel you'll, like or you'll sing it into your phone and then you'll be like, what was that crap? Yeah. That was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have like the shittiest voice memos because like I definitely have the shittiest voice memos. I memo. went through and deleted a bunch of ones with where I was driving and tried to hum them in and then I was like, what was that <laughs> now? And, um, yeah, my, you know. mine are a lot of, I voice memo writing, I tended to sing gibberish. Yeah. So yeah. it's just like, <laughs> it's like embarrassing yeah, 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 yeah. you guys ever do do them when like someone else is kind of close or like you're in yeah then you're like you're yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know like i've i've definitely done that those are my favorite to find where i'm like what the fuck? or you whisper it into your phone <laughs> yeah <laughs> you were like whispering <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it's like just the rhythm of the words, and you're like, you feel like your your rap whispering into your phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just not you're like what the hell was that? <clears throat> yeah. And then one day when you die, somebody's gonna get a hold of your voice <laughs> memos and release them all. Yeah. Have you heard Box those? Set. Have yeah. you heard those recordings of Prince where he's just like, they start releasing stuff from Prince's vault. It's just no. like him him playing piano and just fucking shredding and and singing amazing and it's just i don't know it's it's crazy because he was just kind of making shit up <laughs> that's like embarrassing i mean but i feel like prince and michael jackson you know their fucking around was like brilliant you know whereas mm -hmm. like my fucking around sounds horrible and it's just always gonna be <laughs> <laughs> you know if you stumble upon that you're like what what is this <clears throat> I think I, wanna... mo I think most of most people's fucking around sounds horrible. There's like, I know, maybe fifteen or twenty folks ever whose fucking around doesn't sound horrible, so um, yeah. it's okay. Well, one of them's Prince. Well, one not them... anymore. One of them is Prince. Oh. Oh, Josh, no. can you see this, Josh? Can you see this, Josh? It's an only children pick. I got one too. <laughs> <laughs> it's faded. I owe Rob Bro one. Sorry, I'll get you that. That's cool that everyone's asking me to do a, a Hoobastank cover. Um, do you know a Hoobastank cover? A deep, I don't know any covers. A deep cut of a Hootie song. You and me here will come yeah. from different worlds. Right? That's one. That's not a deep cut, though. Ricky wants a I deep know. cut, a B-side, a B-side uh, Hootie song. I, I, I mean, might, know, make I might something know a couple. Uh, I don't know that stuff. I don't know. I really don't know many cover songs. No. These two, I guess. A few. It's Neil Young, stuff like that. Well, let's let's hear a Josh original song. God. Well, some I was gonna play this song off the um, last record, but then someone was. A few people were asking for a song I haven't played in a long a while or a bit. I guess I'll try and do it. So, fuck it. Don't let them um, boss you around, Josh. I don't know. They're here now. They're here, so why not? Um, let's see if we can do it.
really just wanna get high Forget that, let's get stoned Everybody always looking out themselves But not me, I'm looking out for you I'm looking out for you Nice job. Uh, that's a lot of instrumental parts I realized during the... It's a very comforting song though. Thanks. Like it just yeah. it's a song that just feels good to listen to. Oh thank you. Yeah, it has a lot of like instrumental breaks. So like as I was doing that I was like, oh wait, now I have to shorten that part because it goes four to, you know, Matt or Kaylin when you're like yeah. or Mike even when you're like playing acoustic uh, I don't do this whole like acoustic thing a whole lot and I kind of don't really like I'm always working on new stuff so I'm not even playing my old songs ever to like so it's like you're like thinking as you're going but I'm trying to live in it also so you can always just get a harmonica I almost brought it I should have but I did not yeah, just my acoustic attitudes <laughs> you should lay down that uh what are you gonna what was it what are you gonna dance to tonight what did we come up with yeah is that what it was yeah. yeah you should lay down a demo of that while you're at the studio tonight joel you joel you up for this he said yes cool <laughs> so and if created. brian's there he can play bass on it we're gonna we're gonna record a demo tonight now <laughs> <laughs> New song happened right here from the comments. That's great. <laughs> yeah, look at those comments. Cowbell? Yeah, we do need a cowbell player. <laughs> Don't need a conga player anymore, though. I was intrigued um, Kate, when Caitlin was talking about writing songs, and she mentioned that she finds the bridge to be difficult oftentimes. Who do you think, who's a songwriter that you think writes? A great bridge. Not me. I hate bridges. I love bridges. I love them too. Jo Josh. Josh writes a good bridge. Jim writes a good bridge. I've written good bridges, but I just I I kind of feel like a good bridge could just be the start of a whole other song. I yeah. don't like it when I I don't like it when bridges are forced. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I would rather I would rather have either an instrumental part like a guitar solo or something than have a, a, a forced bridge, but that's me. 
But yeah, don't you, you know, like like a great bridge? Doesn't that just like hit you? Like give you like the yeah? Tingles no, like I know. A I just really if great I can't, bridge kicks in. I just think the I, for me personally, like if I that was one of the things like well, there's a, a a bridge in a radar state song that Josh wrote that really like because uh, I had written this song, I just didn't put a bridge in it, and he was like, "What if you did this?" And then like that's like my favorite part. That summer Sunday song because you wrote the bridge. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, it really made the song. But I just, I have a tendency if I don't come up with something fantastic for a bridge, then I just skip it. It's definitely got to take you, it's got to be, it's got to be perfect. A forced bridge is the worst thing ever. It's, yeah. you know, but also a good instrumental part. Yeah. It could be a, just as much as a bridge. There's nothing takes worse than a song that's back. got like, like it needs to be like the third hook. Like it's just like mm -hmm. the verse has to hook, the chorus has to hook, and then if it's like if those are both great and then the bridge is fine, it just kind of bums me out. Yeah. But yeah. Hot take. Hot yeah. Take. Yeah. I yeah. think it's legit. I feel like, I mean, this is sad to kind of bring up, but like one of my favorite songwriters was Adam Schlesinger, and like, oh. you know, I I feel like when I think of like people who pick cool chords like in like the right spot, you know, and like cool bridges. I'm like, mm -hmm. to me, that is like top tier. Like, oh, what a great songwriter. Like I, if I could write like that, um, and of course like he's, you know, he passed away this year, but. Um, I really yeah. like something that I like doing that I didn't realize this is what it was in the, <clears throat> that he did in, in like Sink mm -hmm. to the Bottom. How yeah, this, yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the same chord progression in the verse and the chorus, but he just, the melody uh -huh. changes. So it's like, yeah. I'm gonna sing to the bottom with you. Out in the highway and up in the air. And everyone, you know, it's just like, it's the same, but it, it gets heavier. And I, I like doing stuff like that sometimes, which is like one repeating thing, but then changing the vocals or changing uh -huh. the instrumentation on it. I think it's a fun thing. Now I just want to play Fountains of Wayne song. I know. Like yeah. Mexican wine. Like the, I love those chords. I love, I love like just the smart. I don't know, just like smart choices. Yeah, and like keeping the chords the same, changing the melody, making it more like lifting it up. I don't know. I just I love picking apart his stuff and always kind of have. But yeah, I, I agree. I think yeah. he was just a, a genius. Yeah. Like one of the best songwriters to ever live. I think, at least in the in the type of in the genre that we're all kind of part of yeah i i, I love the way he trying to remember how radiation vibe goes now <laughs> oh well <laughs> yeah baby. that's it baby baby mom what's wrong it's a radiation vibe i'm grooving on <laughs> don't make you want to get some sun shine shine just such a good hook uh, it's just kind of a weird sorry <laughs> no those are great great songs though yeah. i think that the uh the whole record that that mexican wine is on is is just like perfection what is that welcome interstate, welcome interstate managers managers yeah yeah, mm. <clears throat> yeah i've been playing that a lot that guy could write a bridge i also think <laughs> That Rivers, guy could write a bridge. He could write a bridge. Rivers Cuomo's got a couple bridges yeah. that are pretty fucking pretty good. Yeah. I just love, like, I love a good bridge. I think it's hard to write a great bridge. And I, I do agree. A good song doesn't require a bridge. Like, I, I, I'll i go where you go, Matt, a lot, where it's like, okay, well, I'll do a guitar solo over the verse part. Yeah. Or whatever. And that will suffice. But if a great bridge happens, like, I think sometimes those, that can be like one of the most magical moments in listening to pop music is when this killer bridge like comes out of nowhere and you're like, whoa. I want to. Yeah, especially when you build like something intense in the middle of a bridge and like it kind of like climaxes and then it comes back around to the chorus. Is... Like my Michelle. Yep, like my Michelle. There you go. I hate to bring up Ben Folds again, but. I... I was listening to a podcast that he just did recently and he talked about songwriting and he said that when I write a bridge, 
I want whatever perspective I had for the first half of the song to be different for that chorus, last chorus. Like I want whatever character is in that song to feel differently the last time I say the chorus again. You know, it's just- Yeah, it's getting more more into like, like a sort story structure or something. Yeah, like the, yeah. And I was like, I, I, that was never something I really thought about too much, but I liked feeling like it was a different perspective on the chorus after that. And instead of just a different cool hook or I don't know, I liked that little tidbit he's another one of those people that's kind of on a different level than mm -hmm. a lot of other yeah. people yeah like his fucking around sounds good is what uh -huh. you're trying to say yeah his yeah. fucking around probably sounds really good <laughs> yeah it probably does <laughs> <clears throat> i think the uh if you have if you ever listened to the weezer song it's on the white album like summer lane and drunk dory i think it is song exploder Didn't the bridge the bridge on that song yeah. is like that is one of my favorites on that whole record too yeah and that song exploder podcast where he talks about writing it they they i don't know how much you're into song exploder but it's pretty wild it, it's a, based on spreadsheets which yeah. i didn't think about. <clears throat> yeah josh i bet you've got a whole you've got probably hundreds of spreadsheets with uh chord progressions and and lyrics in them don't you I uh, no, I don't really write down the, that stuff. Uh, the lyrics, I will, but no. No, just hearing about your process, it sounds it's like almost the opposite of what Rivers does, because his is like. It seems these days it's very scientific. I don't really. I'm not too familiar as far as like after um, and the Pinkerton record, I guess. Um, I don't know. Sometimes. I like Weezer. I think they're like, but I don't know if, I don't know what I think of it sometimes also. Like, <laughs> so I'm not, it's not, I don't know. Like Pink, that Pinkerton record, I'm not really too into, to be honest. Um, there's some cool melodies, but like as an overall lyrical themed record, I think it's a little weak. Um, Oh but, come on! We don't have to. We don't have to do that right now. <laughs> oh shit on wait, is that? Oh no, it wasn't. I think it's great. It's very great. I mean, like I was. I guess I was just like, oh, the Blue Record is very good. Is a very good power pop album, rock and roll. Um, I, I, guess I wasn't trying to be upset about it. I just thought um, there's just like some weird lyrics on it. it there are some weird. That one that, has that, a couple like, songs are like just. I'm just kind of like they throw me off a little bit. Yes. Um, as far as, I, 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 it's not weak, I guess. I'm sorry. I'm not trying. To, I wasn't trying to be rude um, at all. And they're very good. There, there are a couple of songs. If those lyrics were on a song made today, that's lot, maybe where I was trying to go. Would have issue <clears throat> with those lyrics. Yeah. So like, I guess I was like kind of going. Well, never mind. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, but uh, Super Drag wrote some good. Uh, I think I saw someone write John Davis. They wrote some very good uh, bridges. Oh yeah. Super oh, yeah. Drag's like kind of one of those. I don't know why they they don't get as much. They're kind of like the zombies of the '60s in a way. Where like, mm -hmm. you know, I know zombies. The people talk about them more, but there's a very long time where it's just like Kinks, Rolling Stones, and Beatles, and no one mentioned the zombies. And like, kind of, you know, uh, Super Drag's kind of one of those bands that maybe doesn't get talked about as much as all these other bands that we're talking about right now who are completely just very, very good at what they did. And John is a, a musical genius. I I agree. You can 100%. get me wasted. I mean, it's so good. Yeah. You're the one I cut and pasted. Yeah. I wonder if Weezer's watching me. I'm sorry, guys. You're probably <laughs> watching this right I, now. I don't think Weezer's wa one, one of the people watching this right now. I think we're all safe. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I don't think they're watching. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, <clears throat> no, I I agree. That it's super drag though. I I think you're spot on. I think they're they're one of the one of the best bands of that era. Mm -hmm. And they're I think they're one of those bands that's like way more influ in, influential than they were popular. Like mm -hmm. their influence was much larger than their commercial success. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Everyone's talking about Sugar Ray in these comment sections. What? I mean, yeah. maybe maybe they have a point here. <laughs> what is that about? I don't know about that. We are coming up on. I don't 70... know about that. <laughs> Agreed. We're just not going into Sugar Ray. We're not going there. <clears throat> because that guy probably could beat us all up, so we don't need that. I can't beat. He can't beat me up. I'll tell you that much. I will fucking go. 
Let's do six, it. You six feet. Sexy. Six feet, bro. Kaylin and I. Feet, bro. Six feet. Me in a fucking sundress. Sugar Ray. <laughs> so I can go. Rivers is going to write Pinkerton 2 about how much he hates Josh. That's a good <laughs> man, that wouldn't be like the first record someone wrote. Are you kidding me? So, get in line. All right, well, I know we're coming up on almost at 80 minutes here, and I know Matt has another stream coming. I will I'll, I'll wrap it up asking each one of you a question. Off, I've, my friend has these things called pod decks. <laughs> which are just like random podca podcast questions and I, cool. I find them enjoyable so we will uh, wrap it up with one pod deck question I'll do yours first Matt so you can get onto your next stream oh we're good when you die what do you want to be remembered for this is kind of an easy one I mean for somebody that makes music um I, I guess it depends on who's doing the remembering in a general sense. Uh, I guess probably for being a, a decent songwriter and a good cook. And when it comes to my family, that I was a good good dad and a good husband. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know. I don't think about it much. <laughs> I, I try not to think about my own death any more than I have to. I don't think about that one much either. Which song, if, if somebody had to only remember one song that you wrote, which one would it be? It would be probably whatever the most recent song I wrote was, because that would be the one I like the best. <laughs> but it'll be, it'll be, um, like, if they do a eulogy for me, it'll be something off of the second Gathered Kids record. It'll be Holiday or Out of Reach or something like that. Like, and I'm totally fine with that. I like that it would be the most recent one that you wrote because I, I think a lot of. That's always my favorite. Play. That's always yeah. my favorite song. Yeah, me, me too. Typically, I think for a lot of artists, that that's how it is. Like, the most re your most recent record is your favorite. <clears throat> All right, I'll pull up another one. Kaylin, what would be your best day ever? Sorry, that was my dog just throwing up uh, in the background. <laughs> is, that uh, your, is that your answer? It's actually the answer. Um, <laughs> bleh, bleh, uh, my best day ever, it would just be me um, probably, honestly, in a cabin in the woods going for hikes and coming back in the morning for a hike, coming back, making some awesome food, um, having friends over, hanging out with them, building a fire. Um, telling stories, playing songs, hanging out, drinking beer um, for the rest of the night. I don't know, just anything to do with being outside and eating delicious food and being with friends is like my favorite day ever. Um, yeah. Something I can't do most <laughs> things of right now. I can't do any of that. Uh, that's my, that's definitely my best day. That sounds like a good day to me too. Yeah, for sure. Especially like just like chilling outside when the weather is nice and having a fire like at night is pretty, yeah. pretty great. Yeah. For someone who lives in LA, I feel like I'm, I mean, I'm from Pennsylvania and like my whole, like my whole like MO with hanging is just want to be outside, like swimming in the river or like hanging out outside, making a picnic or like having a fire or something. something chill. So where in Pennsylvania are you from? Uh, Hershey. Oh, where, wow. Where the chocolate's from. Mm -hmm. was was from it's not from there anymore but yeah central pa nice yeah all right i'll pull one for josh here <clears throat> if you had someone following you around wait if you had someone following you around all the time what would you have them do i'll uh, probably carry around my molly crew records in a case of heineken <laughs> Just in case I needed one of those two things. I don't know. Something like that. Well, there's a, it would have to be in a vehicle, though, because there's this fun fact Josh hates to walk. They'd be, following, they'd be driving me around in a vehicle, carrying around some crew records, <laughs> popping up in some Heine, cold, ice cold Heinekens, and uh, you know, just getting ready to kick some ass on the wild side. Basically, what would happen. Oh, yeah. 
<clears throat> How many Motley Crue records do you own? Oh, I own them all. Except the one with John Karabi. You throw that one right out the, right out the window. <clears throat> that one can go the way of Pinkerton? Uh, uh, look, this is a fine <laughs> album. I mean, it's like if you want to get, like, I mean, we could easily, like, go into the debate of, like, Girls, Girls, Girls versus Pinkerton here. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, I roll with Girls, Girls, Girls. So. I'm so. looking at their discography now, the uh, Motley Crue. They have a lot New, more records than I thought they did. New Tattoo is a very underrated album. What is the Dirt soundtrack? Oh, is that? Oh, movie? yeah, you could throw that one away too. Okay, yeah. that's that considered goes. an album. That one goes in the. Bin. You also throw away that movie. Do I have to apologize <laughs> to Molly Crew now for saying two, saying yeah. two <laughs> things bad about their is like Nikki Six watching? I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I don't think Rivers Cuomo or Nikki Six are either. They one might be watching together, watching. six feet apart. They could be. Or they're quarantining together. They, they, they might be. They're quarantine buddies. <laughs> Yeah, that's what would happen, though. I like that. Yeah. Carry your, your Motley Crue records and your Heineken in case you need them. That's yeah. good. <laughs> Definitely will. All right, y'all. Well, thank you very much for joining us. I hope when the world opens back up and you all come through Milwaukee and play, hopefully, the X-Ray Arcade, you can stop by with full bands and do, like, a proper session in here. Cool. Jeff, thank you so much for having all of us, Mike. I, yeah, I appreciate you. it. Yeah, thank you. And thank yeah. you guys for playing. Yeah, fun. definitely, yeah. Kaylin and Matt. It was fun. Yeah, it was uh, very nice to meet you, Matt. Nice to meet you again, Josh. I, I feel like I don't remember much about the times we met before. That I feel like that was yeah. about 100 years ago. We'll have a nice cool Heineken sometime, and it'll all be good. Yeah. <laughs> You come on over, we'll play some Motley Crue, crack a couple of Heinekens. Sounds like heaven. <laughs> I like doing these live streams, but I really love doing like the actual proper sessions here in the room because I like full rock. Yeah. I hope I hope Radar State comes through Milwaukee sometime we will. after we will. this stuff opens up. Yeah. And X Ray Arcade's two miles away from here. Have you in and out fifteen minutes or forty five minutes? Boom. Yeah, we'll do it for sure. No doubt about it. Awesome. Thanks to everyone cool. um, who watched this also and made all those comments. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Ricky and Gilligan and Bry Clyde and Joel. <laughs> Dan yeah, Johnson. Thank you, Joel. <laughs> yeah, thanks right. for having me, guys. This was really fun. All right, yeah, have a great, great weekend, time. you guys. Yeah, you too. See y'all. Yeah. Bye. Bye.